opposition. And as we get into draft for game two, DFM will be moving over to the blue side. Their backs are against the wall. A loss here will mean their departure from MSI 2023, as Loud will continue on through the lower bracket play-in stage. And already the bands are coming out thick and fast. And Medic, so far it looks like the things aren't changing that dramatically. Uh, we are seeing some pretty stock standard stuff. It's actually very reminiscent of what we saw from the previous game with mainly things like Dilution taken off the board, the Olaf and the Nautilus, with Varus and Vi also being removed. Yeah, in fact, it's exactly the same as we saw in the previous game so far. There's the Rakan, so phase one bans remain perfectly uh, the same as what we had in game one. Now the question is, with DFM electing to be on the blue side, what is their priority? They could look towards the Gragas, that was Pol 2's most played across the course oh, of 2023. Big. They'll lock it in. For him, we expect, could of course be flexed, but we actually haven't seen it played in any other role, but still having it once in the jungle for DFM. Yeah, it's, it's expectations are that this is for Toll 2. Yeah. You know, uh, ov obviously as a champion, it can be flexed, but uh, Lau, they're saying, why fix what isn't broken? True. And Felios Maokai can be the lock-in for them. Obviously already a very strong team fighting core, and uh, it's something that, well, Root is going to be more than happy to get his hands on. I think it is his most played champion so far this year. It's something that he has a lot of success on. And we've seen how proficient he is at the champion as well. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Tom Kench already locked in for them as well. But it depends because Loud may say, you know what? We actually don't need to provide that much peel when we are playing this front to back composition. It's fine. So they can actually just lock in their mid. They could lock in an answer into the expected Gragas top if they wanted to as well. They've showcased that they can be quite flexible with their support option. You can see DFM realizing perhaps jungle was a little bit of an issue in game one. Picking the Viego, if he gets resets in a fight, can absolutely take over the game, of course, and gives you a little bit more flexibility coming into the later portion of the game than in Nidalee just chucking spears across the wall and hoping something sticks. The Thresh I would love from Loud because it gives you not only usual disengage and a bit of pick potential, but it gives you extra disengage when you're against a Gregor. Something like a Tom Kench could be knocked in with the explosive cask and then who cares if you devour your Aphelios, you're still in the middle of the enemy team. Whereas with a Thresh, you can stand that little bit further back and you always have the Lantern for the extra added safety. Uh, I was about to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Blitzcrank and a Tom Kench fan. Yep. Uh, with Nautilus already removed, I think Tom Kench, especially into this composition, could be so good. The other thing we're thinking about is a Braum. I was thinking about Braum in the last game, but because they prioritized the Lulu so early, it wasn't something that was really an option. But when you have such a heavy team fight that just kind of walks into you, Braum can be so effective and it might be something they want to remove. No, so both Tom Kench and Braum are available. I think both can be very solid picks for Harp if that's the direction that he wants to go in. He, of course, does have an incredibly deep champion pool, so wouldn't be surprised to see a number of different things come out from him. It depends what DFM want to do with the remainder of the draft. Expectations are that we'll see top lane come through from Loud, something relatively safe. They may just run back the Gnar once again. They could even go for the Scion themselves if they just want to make sure that they have a solid front line. They have a lot of options at their disposal. The Swain man does suggest the DFM may be looking at an Ari once more. Yeah, giving Ari to Ari up is uh, something that has happened very often for DFM and has worked yes. very often for DFM. Won four of his six games on it this year. I wonder if Loud will look up towards the top lane. Nah, for Robo, he had a great performance on it in game one and into the Gragas can still have a relatively favorable matchup, especially with how Robo is playing right now. DFM will look towards their mid and support. As you say, Tom Kench a possibility. I think it doesn't give Harp enough agency for my own liking, but in terms of compositionally, T Tom Kench makes a lot of sense. Well, we'll have to wait and see. We need to see a mid laner locked in. Oh, wow, are they gonna go? <laughs> they might be going in the direction that you want, Medic, and that yep, they will. Like so they that. want Harp on an engage. And the Leona will be locked in. Leona Jinx, a bot lane that we don't often see. Mm -hmm. Obviously, one champion would prefer to scale, wait a little bit longer, whereas the other one wants to be a little bit more aggressive in lane. But admittedly, Leona, while not the best at peeling for a Jinx, can offer a lot of teamfight tools. Personally, I'm a big fan of Silas and Tamaokai. I think that what we saw at Worlds, when uh, Zekka specifically was using yeah. it as an answer into Maokai, like it, it proves how effective it can be to steal away the Maokai ultimate and have that tool available in team fights. Immediately, Tinone's responding with Cassio of his own, a tried and true champion of his. 
something that he's used consistently throughout his career and often defaulted back onto should the situation arrive. You can see that the DFM fans are still present in the audience, even if the Loud fans are, to their name, louder. We'll see if DFM can bounce back. I think they have a little bit more of a well-rounded composition this time around, but Loud sticking to what they won with in game one. Yeah, good front to back with a tank in the form of the Maokai, some protection in the form of the Thresh, and Loud, if they can get that early lead, or even keep the early game stable, do scale incredibly well. DFM have a little bit more, to the, a few more arrows in their quiver. A few more notches on their bow with the addition of this Silas and the Viego, who just gives you a little bit more pressure as the game goes on over that in Italy. I like the Gragas as well for Toltu. It means that he can have some agency of his own, can disrupt the fight. Uh, as on the Scion, he really struggled to actually be in the action. I was often just dodged to the side off. Some of the things that concern me for DFM is that you have basically four melee champions into Cassio Maokai. Yeah. Um, on top of the fact that Aphelios loves champions that comes into him, uh, it, it's it's a situation where, again, DFM, I think that like compositionally, it's harder to execute. Uh, the, the burden of execution does fall on them, and that's not to say that they need to get another game lead with a comp like this. I think their scaling is a little bit better, and they have a few more tools in the fight. But uh, by no means will these fights be easy. We'll be keeping my eyes on the mid-jungle of DFM once more. We'll see if Arya can be unleashed on the map, because this matchup specifically is going to be a tough one for Arya to navigate. Obviously, playing into range can be a little bit tricky. Are we going for the first strike? Tin owns with the Conqueror in that mid lane. Once again, an aftershock now. I know real surprises when you look across the board. In terms of runes, everything pretty stock standard. I'll remind everyone watching, you can log into your Riot account and watch MSI on lolesports.com to earn exclusive in-game content. And new MSI-specific emotes and icons are dropping. It's active right now and will run through the entire tournament. Did get a capsule uh, yesterday as well. Did you? Yeah. I do collect them though, because I'm fortunate enough to be part of the League Partner Program, so oh. I get the skins unlocked for me. But I just have this collection of like 50 capsules from Worlds 2020. Wow. What a yeah. humble brag. I know, it's a huge brag, you know. What a humble I, brag. Look at all this digital stuff I have, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sell it. I can <laughs> open it, but it gives me skins I already have. Opening it is the best part. It is the best part. It's, it's an enjoyable experience. And for the moment, now having an enjoyable Friday afternoon as they won game one here against DFM. We'll see what DFM can do. Their early game in game one was pretty strong. Like they, they, they were able to get that lead. They had about a thousand gold. Obviously, it was it's the, mitigated uh, by Lau. It's the... I mean, wait, sorry. Were you saying DFM had a strong Yeah, game? yeah. They, they got about a thousand gold ahead. I know? mean, they, they found a gank. Yeah, <laughs> that's a strong, in my opinion, if you have a kill and the enemy team doesn't have a kill, you have a gold lead. That's a strong uh, I mean, game. yeah. The, I think that this game, they have more options to find ganks. Mm -hmm. and mainly because Harp is on an engage. True. Uh, Arya does also have some setup in lane. I think the top lane just needs to be left alone once again. This is a very bot side focused draft once more. Toltu though, gonna be feeling very confident on a pick that he knows is comfortable for him. This could be a good trade for him. Yeah. Looks for the damage onto Robo. Robo trying to build up that Mega Nah. Gets it, gets the wallop off, but Toltu can continue to chase him down. Robo. Won't invest the flash. Heals up with that potion, the Dorian shield as well. Ticking him over I and really now Brock can look up here. Kill him. Okay, maybe not. I thought that if he had W, E, W into flash, E, auto, yeah. could have been enough to get a kill. Only level two though, so Q, E was his uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. His I didn't choice. realize that he started with the Q, so not bad there. Croc though hovering around. Now Toltu hits the level three. Now he's definitely got, he's within kill range and I think Croc is looking to try and Take advantage of this if Toltu does commit the flash. Robo gets to level three as well. Looks for the boomerang, gets a bit of damage down. The cask out, of course, this ward. Yeah. The chat will be spamming minus one now. Sorry, Toltu, nothing you can do about it. But a full clear coming out from Steel. They have no information as to where Croc started, but Steel, unbeknownst to him, is already building a bit of an advantage. The bot lane does have the shove, and Tinone's proving why this matchup can be quite challenging. I was. Kind of expecting Arya to maybe start with a corrupting pot to mitigate some of that, but instead choosing not to. Steel now threatening a dive, and I think this does make a lot of sense. You've got to be careful though as Robo gets closer oh, and closer so to Mega. Low. But even with Mega, I still think that they have the ability to get the kill here. Steel just trying to buy time. Robo levels up, hits four. Still 200 though, HP on HP him. HP is so low. Here they go. They're looking for the dive. Flash E, there's the kill. Toll 2 gets out. Steel secures it. 
I talked about how I thought that they were just going to leave the top side of the map alone, but they find a good kill. Now the hook comes through. Seros predicting the sidestep, maybe even the flash from Udafon. But Udafon holds his nerve and no advantage is gained. So DFM once again find first blood, but they find it in the top side of the map. And part of the safety for that gank for DFM, because they did spend a little bit of time up there, is the, is the vision they had. They actually had a ward on Quok's blue buff, so they knew he was working his way down towards that bottom side. Quok has yet to clear out his wolves, his gromp, or his blue. Instead, prioritizing getting these razor beaks. Krugs as well have spawned, and then after this clear, he can pass down through bots and perhaps look for a possible gank on the Udapon and Harp combination. That is what worked for Loud in game one, getting Root ahead, and Root showed that if you invest into him, he's very willing to be aggressive in these team fights later on. It certainly is. Root is a player that we'll have to keep our eyes on as the game continues. Right now, very even in CS. The bot lane has been very quiet, as to be expected. Robo losing his life, definitely not part of Loud's early game plan, but a bit of a trade hit. I don't think it's going to result in a huge amount, though. Keeping my eyes on Steel as he navigates his way into Fog of War in bot lane. They should have information, DFM. Oh, those wards actually timed out. Well, they should definitely know that. But with the wave pushing in, there is a big opportunity here. But you imagine that Loud wants to try and reset after clearing out these waves as well. So, Steel is mainly here. Let's look for an opportunity. Oh, was he not spotted? No. If you hug the wall just like that, you can get in into that second bush. But you can see, Root and Seos know that something may be happening. Zenith played from Harp, good play away. Root stunned up, though the Lantern going down, but Root locked down. And Unipon on the board, 2-0 now for DFM. The chain CC was clean from DFM. I believe it was the stun from Steel into the Q stun from Harp. So even though the Chompers couldn't connect, the CC duration was good. DFM find themselves another kill. This early game now is Medic going very well for DFM. Already a 700 gold lead and Root shut down. Didn't burn the cleanse or the flash in that last play. So deciding that he wasn't going to get away anyway, even if he had used those summoners. Udipon goes back. He bought Berserkers, decides instead a Noon Quiver, the name of the game, alongside a cult to try and keep that gold stacking up. Loud using the opportunity because DFM had to push in the wave and then reset there, going back to base, which means when we come out from, you know, the realm of death, we can pass it, uh, pass it down towards this dragon, secure the first Drake of the game. Robo trading here in the top lane with Toll 2, winning it out right now. The wallop into the wall, into the mini Nar, into the explosive cast, but Toll 2, very low on mana, puts down another barrel. He's going to be able to sustain himself oh, up with that happy hour. Up. As you say, Arya on his way. Robo does have the flash, the boomerang coming out, looking for the hypercharge. Arya comes in, and down goes Robo. A great roam from Arya. I was wondering why Toltu was running up in yeah. the lane. I was like, shouldn't you be running away? But his whole plan was to cut off the options for Robo when it came to getting closer to the tower. He kind of forced him closer to the wall, which indirectly forced him closer to Arya, making it then easier to find that kill. Well played from DFM, Toltu. You're seeing the difference when he gets his hands on his comfort champion. He's doing so well in the matchup this time round. Uh, he's lost one game out of 12 on this champ this year. He's, as you say, incredibly comfortable. Maybe lucky number 13 for DFM. A win here, of course, would even out this series. But already a much better early game for DFM this time round. Now, admittedly loud, we already see how this composition works in the 5v5. You have slightly less engage options just because you've replaced the Thresh with a Leona. But by and large, the principle is still the same. Group up as five, leverage your team fight power, a lot of utility at your disposal. And you're going into what is a Casio Aphelios. Yeah. Like it's a very powerful front to back team composition, which is why ideally what you want is to build these early game advantages where you can. Leverage the fact that Maokai isn't the strongest ganker. And then when you enter these mid game fights, you have that small gold advantage. So even the weaknesses from the comp are mitigated by the fact that you have that item or gold lead. So right now, DFM is off to a great start. And this could be a big fight for them. Keep your eyes on the supports. Harp, level six, on his way up. Oh, or not. Actually, I feel like that would have been a really good opportunity to roam. DFM making the decision here not to contest this, potentially. I think they wanted six on steel. They're going to get it. 
told to trying to get away from Bobo flashes up. Running. They should fight trying to get this. away from the twisted advance, but told to with a knock back into the heartbreaker. Robo low, 150 HP remaining on the night. He's going to try and kite away. Steel still on the chase. No flash for him. No ult, and Robo gets underneath the tower. Meanwhile, told to tries to dish some damage back out. Steel pops the hammer path and will be able to escape. And in the end, the super mega death rocket. Finds the NAR, finds the kill, and Udipon 2-0 to the good. Wow, Udipon, I wasn't expecting the rocket to come from downtown. DFM's bot lane looking much more comfortable this time around. That early kill combined with this one is going to put Udipon in a very comfortable position. I was surprised that Toltu would choose to flash away. I looked at that 2v2 and I said, there's no way that a Viego Gragas is going to lose that one. But it seems like that after a little bit of skirmishing, DFM realized the same thing and were able to find a good trade. They walk away with the Herald, and now they can use this to really open up the game. Maybe they can funnel some gold into Arya, leveraging the mid lane plates, or maybe they just want to keep funneling gold into Utapon. Arya looks for the damage, back by Engage, dodged by Tinon. Spectral more channeled by Steel, but won't be close enough to land that W on the Cassio. And in the end, Tinon's able to survive the Engage from Arya, who is. That's half HP. Sinos has to respect the fact that the enemy jungle and the enemy support are currently not seen on the map, and so they could come in, calling across Seos and Croc to try and bolster his defenses. Dragon spawning in about a minute and a half. That'll be the next main objective that both these teams play for. We see Steel hovering around mid with Seos right behind Tinos. A three versus two. Of course, they didn't have full information as to where Seos was, but with Arya's HP bar, it's not something that DFM feel confident in fighting right now. This yeah. will give loud access into the river. That control ward, though, just above Croc, not yet spotted along with a single ward, so DFM still have information in the bot river at the very least. They need Arya to come back to base. He does, of course, have the TP. Let's see if he picks up the Everfrost here. Would be really nice to grab, and that he will. Ahead of the dragon, and this is what we're talking about. When you get those early gold leads, it can make a big difference in getting those early item spikes. And now you look at it with the dragon spawning in about 40 seconds. In an ideal world, Udipon could get his Gale Force as well, but likely hasn't had the time for that now. But with the Everfrost in Arya's possession, it should be enough for DFM to gain control over this river. Let's start at this objective. Yeah, very possible that Lau just give it up. You don't have to fight this. It's only second dragon in the game. The Stats and Ocean Soul gives are, you know, beneficial, but not so much that you want to throw away your lives in defense of it. And with DFM, as you say, having that 2,000 gold lead, now probably just want to sit back, reevaluate, work out exactly how they can scale into this game. The Rod of Ages on Tinones will, in about 10 minutes, given that level up, of course, the Riftel charging in mid here, but still comes across. Arya still used away the Nature's Grasp, and with the charge, I managed to take down two plates. Use of Herald here for DFM. I think that when you saw three members mid, there was actually a great opportunity for you to threaten bot. Yep. You know, really start funneling those plates into Udipon. But I guess the idea was to keep Loud underneath that tower, create this point of pressure. Arya will throw out the Maokai ultimate. Again, keeping that pressure up and just keeping Loud rooted to this mid-tier one. The Dragon will go to DFM uncontested. They will hold on to their gold lead for now. Overall, great early game from DFM. And from Toltu as well. Oh, like, yeah. it, it's taken him two days to really wake up, but in this game, the pressure he's putting down onto Robo, the fact he continually is winning out on these trades, still coming across as well as Robo does still have the flash. Still can look for the stun, but Robo will just hold the flash, gets underneath the tower. The Heartbreaker coming out as well, but the stun not quite connecting means that Robo is able to walk out of that one. Meanwhile, in the bottom side of the map, you can see Lau trying to get something, trying to at least deny a little bit of vision. They'll do exactly that and maybe steal away a red buff to boot. Yeah, the cross map makes a lot of sense here. An opportunity for Lau to get some plates back, get root a little bit more gold. Lau actually choosing not to steal away the red buff here. A little bit surprising. That second plate didn't quite go over in favor of Lau. The croc continues to hover. Tinones will be locked to his mid lane for the time being. Told to going back to base, but no TP. The engage. Locked the up. FM. Has the cleanse. The lancer goes down as well. Root trying to disengage here. The solar flare hits and Root locked up. The flash comes out. Nature's grass from the side as well. Moonlight Vigil will give Root a little bit of healing. And in the end, Loud are able to disengage. Croc has the flash. The Zenith play chases him though. And Arya can dash back in if he wants. Harp though now on the wrong side of the wall. He'll fall. Tinones takes him out.
And the gold evens out just that little bit as Avia tries to escape from the Casio, but it could be some pretty difficult clutches to manage to wrangle yourself away from. And the hook landing onto Steel as well means that Seos and Tinones will be able to get another Unipon now taken down in the bot lane. And what was originally disaster for Lau turns into delight. Really good punish from Loud and a massive overstep from DFM. Hart, he was not planning on going over that wall. No. A, a great flash from Croc drags him with him, and then Tino actually destroys the Blast Cone before Harp gets an opportunity to use it and get away to safety, which means that a man down, Loud see an opportunity to re-engage. So it all starts with a good setup initially from DFM. The cleanse gets forced out. The flash then comes through from Utapon saying, hey, you know what? I think I can get an execute onto Root here. He gets a big heal from his ultimate, thanks to the red gun. And then DFM is saying, you know what, let's go for this. Flash in from Harp, and then look, he's locked over the wall. Tinones immediately hits the blast cone, which means the Harp can't get to safety. Free kill handed over to Tinones, and then DFM split up. And there's a bit of a mixed decision here. Arya is saying, you know what, I think I can fight Tinone. Steel is saying, I can help you. But now, as Arya is disengaging, Steel finds himself left isolated, and Unipon, in his attempt to then help him, isolates himself as well. So DFM kind of tried too hard to assist their teammates, which then baited one another into kill after kill after kill. Something Broxer told me once when he was training me how to jungle is dip the inters. Sometimes you just have to accept someone is dead. And uh, right there, DFM throwing good after bad, it seems, losing a couple of members and now loud with a gold lead, Betty. Almost a thousand gold ahead. Going to be able to get a little bit more here as we see the MasterCard gold difference. 14, Root with a strong lead, 700 gold ahead. And it's only going to keep expanding as the game continues. You can see actually 900 gold now as we come past up towards the 16 minute mark. Rift held up a minute 23 on the Hextech Drake as well. Would only be the second of the game for either of these teams, but it feels like the Drake is just a backdrop. It's just scene setting for a fight. And both these teams seem willing to take a battle once again in the river. Right now, the Herald, the start, the Loud Steel trying to come in as well with that Harrowed Path. He has to do a little bit of coming across. It's going to be a fight, Medic. It is, but look at how separated DFM are. The question is, can Toltu get onto the back line? Because that's a good position for the Grag as the hook lands. As we put some damage down across the wall, Nature's Glass coming out as well. And Harp and Unipon still able to dodge away from that one, but Steel locked up towards the top side. The Harpbringer coming out, disengages Steel. Seos looking for another hit, hits onto Harp as Arya now stunned up down towards the top side of this fight as Harp is a low. Meanwhile, the engage from Tinos, he flashes forward, but already Root is down. And it's all on Tinos to do what he can here, but Arya dashing around, Steel with a Heartbreaker gets one. Seos looking for the hook across the wall, but can't find it. Robo will fall as well. And in the end, it's DFM who come out on top. It's a one team fight for DFM and the eight carries from both sides were just obliterated. There is very little that can stop these top sides from just decimating the AD carries. Root was taken out, Unipon was flashed on by Tinones, and it was up to the mid laners, the junglers, and the top laners, and it was DFM's top side that was able to walk away victorious. They will get themselves the rip herald. And after that bot side skirmish where Loud got a bunch of kills, I was getting concerned for DFM that it would be another affair of DFM floundering their early game advantage and Loud being able to win out on the team fights, but this bodes well for DFM as they showcase that as long as they can get that initial kill, the reset start to come through for Steel. Arya can steal away a good ultimate, and these team fights are still very winnable for DFM. It's a first kill comp, Betty. You have so many resets. You've got the get excited from Udapon as well. If you can kill the first player, the rest of the fight very much starts going in your favor. And they have the tools to do that as well. They have the ability to isolate someone with the Solar Flare, with the Explosive Cast, lock them up, bring them back into your team, Toltu. and then take them out. But Toltu, stepping a little bit too far forward in pursuit of the Dragon. He will fall. He almost gets away, but Robo in the end does manage to secure the kill. The chase continues with the Nature's Cast. It's going to land a twisted advance, the Solar Flare, but Robo has the Nar. Steel flashes away from it, and now Croc is in a bad situation. Manages to escape with the Lantern. Root up towards the top of the fight. It's being isolated by Steel, but in the end, can just back away to the rest of his team. Avi is on his way here as the pings come out for Loud. Rift held used in the mid lane. DFM trying to keep the tempo of the game up, trying to keep Loud away 
from the Seos. bottom side. River, but Seos lands the hook. Half played back. Seos low. Aria diving in. A stopwatch from Seos. Buys him just a second more time and buys him a way to survive as well. Aria now trying to get away from the twin fangs. He dives back in. But Medusa catches him in her grasp. The shutdown going out as Unipol will fall as well. And Loud absolutely decimate the fight. It looks like a good opportunity for DFM. The re engage looked promising. But Seos with the stopwatch. Tino with the ultimate. And Loud with the victorious fight are putting them in a fantastic position to 2 0 this series and move forward in the play in stage. This will be another dragon going into the back pocket of Loud. Another one team fight going to Loud. And the, found, the fans are erupting. It's not done yet, but you can hear the elation in the Loud fans' voices. Brazil, CB LOL never won a best of series as Seos finds it oh. the way away from the blast cone another hook comes out as Thresh can just dish him out for dinner Steel trying to get away the ignite is taken but the boomerang hits him in the backside and ends his life Baron up in 30 seconds buddy that's a 30 second death timer for Steel as well it would be ambitious for Loud to force it but you know what why not they see how strong Tin owns is when you have a Felios and Cassio, your ability to melt this Baron is incredibly fast. And they may just do it. You can just look to control the jungle as well. There are still littered wards in this they're, they're top doing side it. jungle. One second, Tin owns. He's going to start that Baron up immediately. Robo, Nars away, Aria, that's a big ultimate used before the fight begins. The Super Mega Death Rocket saw them there, and you can see the TP already from Toll 2. They know DFM realize that the tempo has been quickened here. They are called to a battle in the river, but right now, Loud have already skilled the Baron, and maybe they'll just look to get out. They can retreat instead. Root advances. Unipon has to flash across the wall. Root survives as Steel goes down. Another will fall as Toll 2 finds himself in the midst of five. Loud, get the Baron, get two, and clean up the fight. Loud get everything that they could want and DFM is falling apart they had a great early game but the skirmishes did not go in their favor they made small mistakes the loud have been very quick to punish and the confidence from this loud squad is something that cannot be slowed down they began the bound without hesitation look at the miasma to cut off the entrance the Maokai ultimate as well Steel gets desperate as he and Utapon try to find a pick onto Root. Root just forces Utapon out of the fight completely. A great flash from Root to sidestep the Heartbreaker. And with all of the shurikens lying in wait, Root walks away victorious. Loud walk away victorious, and Loud are looking to 2-0 DFM and get their revenge from Worlds last year. The addition from Root, of Root, in fact, transforms the landscape against the FM, it seems. Loud now just have to cross their T's and dot their I's. They're pushing in two waves. We saw this in the last game as well. Robo up towards the top side, dealing with Toll 2. DFM not defending their tier twos right now. The inhibitor will be the line of scrimmage, will be the line where the battle is drawn. Aria, Harp and Udipon just trying to find what they can. You do have two items. On Aria, you have two items on Udipom. DFN have the tools in their kits to find their opposing men. The question is, can they do it in the face of Loud? All two. Oh no, he may have overstepped. Oh. He misses the barrel. Robo. Robo just feeling himself right now. Steel's going to go back in, but they cost him half his health. Meanwhile, Root in the mid lane, cycling through the guns as quickly as he can to take down this tower. Robo's going to get that Mega, get a health infusion from it as well, and the inhibitor tower in the mid lane will fall. Aria has the Nature's Grass stolen away. Perhaps that's their last hope of defense here for DFM. One moment between them and elimination from MSI 2023. One moment for someone to show their caliber. DFM still defending. 8,000 gold behind now as their inhibitor in the mid lane falls. Loud are playing patiently once more with a convincing gold advantage. They split up into the 1 4. Tin owns smartly positions himself in between the two lanes ready to support whoever needs it knowing the robo and root in isolation can do the damage that they need now roots committing onto this tower will melt through the objective and what was that four five towers secured in favor of loud 5.3k 5.4k is the baron power play the dragon spawns in a minute's time and loud will walk away with significant damage done dfm 
They're on their last legs. Their backs are completely against the wall. If they aren't able to find a miracle now, their journey at MSI 2023 will be over. And we can see Loud starting to prepare for the final fight. Tin Owens gets himself a stopwatch nose. Buying a little bit of time can be the difference maker. Root on his way to a third item, of Felios Vision, cleared out by Loud. The Dragon up in 30 seconds time would only be sold point for them. But they're not going to sniff at a Hextech here, Vedi. The DFM backs against the wall, backs against the rope. Aria, perhaps a little bit overextended here. The darkness looms. Croc looms, Seos looms, but the rest of the team really aren't there to follow up. Robo looking for a little bit of damage. The Shirelli is coming out as well. And Aria is just chased down. Solar Player used by DFM to try and disengage. But Loud, no minions here to push further forward. Supers in the mid lane start to do their work on their opposing minions. Loud, no Baron on them. The Drake still up if they wanted it, but instead they look for that fight down towards the bottom lane. Yudapon will deal with the mid lane, and Loud will turn their eyes back towards that Drake. So overall, another advantage gain for Loud. They're able to force the flash out from Arya. They're able to secure themselves another objective. Now Loud have a few options here. They could either try and force, start playing through top side, play through bot, set up another 4-1 and slowly siege into the base, or they can just wait for the Baron. They can still maintain this pressure, but they don't have to overcommit. They just chip away at the towers as they wait for the Baron to respawn, which I think is the slower, safer play. But Robo, oh boy. Then his blade goes in, the hook goes down, and Harps immediately locked up against the wall. The Nar coming out as well. Dragon will fall, still steals away. One gets the hook back in as Tol 2 looks for a re engage, but the Petrifying Gaze from Tin owns is perfect. Aria steals away the Nar, the cleanse comes out though, and now Aria is in the midst of three members of Loud, and they will shut him out. Unipon falls as well, and Loud can see the win in their eyes. Loud do not hesitate for a second. Even without Croc, they're able to find a fantastic fight. And it's the carries for Loud that come up clutch. They're looking the 2-0 DFM and claim their revenge. In 2022, it was DFM that denied Loud their shot at Worlds Group. Well, it seems like revenge is a dish best served cold as Loud will face PSG tomorrow. They want a little bit more. They don't want to let DFM get away unscathed. And in the end, they'll take the Nexus and make a date with destiny on the morrow. A 26 minute victory for Loud. Two very convincing games. And what a performance. They came in with a very clear game plan. They executed it extremely well. And you can